Join us as we share our visit to the Vancouver International Boat Show. We are Malcolm and Rachel, and welcome to our channel. We share everything about our retirement lifestyle. Hi there. Hi. We thought we'd share with you um, our experience going to the Vancouver Boat Show this year. Um, we took the ferry, the Hullo Ferry, which you've seen us talk about before, um, across the Strait of Georgia to Vancouver to downtown and then went to um, the arena there and went to the indoor uh, part of the uh, show and also to the outdoor show, which is new for us. Well, it's new because normally mm -hmm. boat shows in Canada are in the winter or just in the fall or the, or the early spring. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so now... We're used to going into sort of big venues that are covered and heated, and it's it's a it's a nice experience. But this time, we're actually able to go out and see boats in the water that are floating. There's no ice, there's no snow, <laughs> and you're in you're in really a much better climate yeah. to go and see these boats. It was actually a pretty nice day the day we went, um, but there was some days of rain I think for the boat show, so it yeah. wasn't all you know sun all the time. No, but it was it was really nice to see some boats in the water as well as see the boats they had on display indoors. It was. So the indoor venue was at BC Place, right in Vancouver, and that was the first place we went. We decided to go there in the morning, yep. um, and it was great. We, we started out um, just going in there, and they do have a whole area um, showing products that you can use on your boat. Mm -hmm. We didn't really need anything like that yet, so we didn't spend a lot of time there, but there were lots of things to look at. Yep. Um, so we went right to the boats, and some of the first boats we saw were Cutwater, which I think we've talked about before. And the same manufacturer, Fluid Motion, makes Ranger Tug. So they were yeah. right next to each other. So it was nice to see both boats. And yeah. um, Ranger Tug, a lot of people have suggested that to us. Yes, and they, they are very nice boats. And we did see some on the loop. Yeah. Um, so they had, I think, three or four different models there. So we had a look at some of those. Yeah. Then we also saw some boats that were aluminum. Right. And one of the first ones we saw was called Hughes. And this is a sort of more entry-level... Um, type boat similar to the Kingfisher we've talked about before but a little bit lower priced. It is and the, some of the features mm -hmm. perhaps are not all the things we're looking for. As far as just the the fit and finish I think it's um, it wouldn't quite work for us. Um, good looking boats but again it's something that perhaps we're looking for a slightly different uh, design as we look at our boating future. And of course, they had Kingfisher boats on display there, and they seemed to be pretty popular boats from what I could hear other people talking about them. Um, the price point is obviously more than Hughes, yeah. um, uh, but uh, still a good, very good, solid boat. Um, so we saw a few models there that we'd seen before, but it was nice to see the ones they had on display and some of yeah. the other options that they include with the boats. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. I think it just reaffirms that the Kingfisher is certainly an option for us. I don't think. New is an option for us, but I think that's true for all the boats we're going to be talking about. I think the advantage, obviously, is when you start looking in this part of the, the country, you do see these really robust aluminum boats around, where normally you don't see those out in the, the East Coast. So it's nice to see them all together, all in one place, and then you can go from one to the next. And we also saw some boats that we hadn't ever heard of before. So there was one manufacturer called Raider, which we mm. hadn't heard of before. Just had a quick look at those. And another one was North River. And that one is made in the United States. It's an yeah. American boat, but it's a really kind of a high-end aluminum boat. So probably even higher quality than Kingfisher. Mm -hmm. Probably a little bit out of our price range, depending <laughs> on the used model that we could potentially find. Um, but that was a really interesting option, and they had, um, I think it was the owner had one specifically built for him, which I think they'd since sold to someone else, but it was like a custom-made one, and it was really interesting. It was. Okay. I mean, I'd never heard of North River before, so it was, again, good to see them all mm -hmm. in a comparative view when they're all on the same floor. Um, really nice boat. It was, uh, I mean, if we could afford it, that would be one we'd go for, I think. Um, but really, I think it's a bit neck and neck. I think the with Kingfisher, I think the North River is, um, in my opinion, probably a little bit better built boat. And the, the features, the some of the things put on it was a little more high end. Um, that's not taking anything away from Kingfisher. Um, but yeah, it was really interesting to see it um, right there next to more or less the Kingfisher yeah. and next to the others. Nice to be able to compare all these boats side by side. Yeah. Duckworth is yet another line of aluminum boats we learned about at this boat show. 
Built in Clarkson, Washington, these are another line of American boats built of heavy gauge aluminum. As we toured a couple of their models, we could really see the high quality and level of workmanship that goes into these boats. As expected, the price range reflects the quality, but it was interesting to see the Duckworth features and compare to some of the other aluminum boats. The um, company that had North River uh, on display also had another boat called ABD, and this was a unique vessel way out of our price range. It was well over a million dollars. Um, but they had um, an outboard diesel engine on it, which was really interesting to see that at the boat show. Right. I've heard of these. I've read about them. Um, and, you know, you you think they're out there, but you've, you you don't know how pervasive or if you're ever going to see one. How common they are. Yeah, but it was there. It was mounted. Two of them were mounted on this boat. Yeah. They also had a standalone uh, exhibition a little bit outside of where the boat uh, boats were. And there's no doubt it's a very interesting technology where you can get the same efficiency of a diesel engine, but you can have it on an outboard, an outboard yeah. and then it can give you the same speeds, more or less, yeah. that a regular gas outboard can. They're much bigger, um, relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. They're much more robust, it looks like. But, and again, I don't know how long they've actually been in the mainstream and people have been using them, so who knows what the quality is like and whether their reliability is where it needs to be. But it was certainly interesting to see that there's diesel outboards there and they're actually selling them now on boats. It'll be really interesting to see how they do over the years and it will. how they come down in price, etc. So. Yeah, it really will. Something else we saw while we were walking around was Seakeeper and we'd heard about uh, that. Would it yes. be really nice to have that on State Goal <laughs> when we were doing the loop? Um, yeah. But it was neat. They had a little mini model and they showed us that. Um, so that's something that's a, a very real option for some people who are on a very big boat with no yeah. stabilizers. Well, in fact, they, they will offer them on smaller boats, I think 25 and up. Yeah. So you can get a small sea keeper, you can put it in. They also have a different option, which isn't that gyro, but you can put them on your trim tabs. So when you're moving, it will basically move the trim tabs in the engine to account for the pitch. To compensate. Yeah. yeah. So there's, yeah. there's a bunch of different options. Um, I don't think we're looking at any of those options, certainly not on a used boat. It's still interesting to see though. Very interesting yeah. to see yeah. and certainly when you can see just how stable it is. Mm -hmm. When you try and push it off, it just comes right it back. It wants to go back, yeah. Yeah, very a, a great feature if you're ever going to, going to go to the Bahamas. Yep. We saw this antique looking Chris Craft boat pulled by a matching car and modern boats like this high performance vessel built in Germany. Lots of Yamaha outboard engines and this Mercury engine with a lower unit that could turn 360 degrees, as well as this Mercury electric motor. If we had more time, we would have visited many more booths. So after we finished looking around in the arena, we took a little shuttle across the bridge to Granville Island, which is where they had the marina filled with boats that everyone could look at. And we saw the Genot, a couple of Genot models. Yes, we did. Deneau is a French company who started with small powerboats and then later sailboats. They also built sailing catamarans, luxury motor yachts, racing sailboats, and inboard powerboats. Deneau is now part of the Beneteau family, and in 2017, they started building NC-895 in Cadillac, Michigan. And then we saw another vessel called True North, which I think was a custom vessel, hmm. um, but it reminded me of Sabre or Back Cove, Back Cove exactly, yeah. either one of those. Um, that interesting vessel. And we also saw a Nordic tug, a smaller yes. Nordic tug. And in Brand fact, new. one of our looper buddies was actually showing that <laughs> vessel. So he was there. Really nice to see him. He actually did the move of the boat. It was on the island, yeah. Vancouver Island, and he, he brought it across the strait for yeah. the show. So he had a, a little trip as well. Apparently heavy fog. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Not much fun. <laughs> I guess we'll experience that at some point. Um, and then, you know, we saw a few boats that had some really unique features with kind of these fold down transoms i guess more like <laughs> to party beyond like a big deck out on the water so certainly some new inventions coming out that i had never seen before no. and we also took the opportunity there was a fleming it was a used fleming but it was beautifully maintained and mm -hmm. it was for sale so we had the opportunity to go in and tour a fleming and uh, you know that would be a great boat to have but boy, um, the upkeep, maintenance, and cost is significant. So a little too much boat for us. Little too much boat for but us. But very, very nice vessel. Yeah. So we had to go in and see it and see the state rooms and the fly bridge and the kitchen. And yeah. Everything. So really nice boat. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing we did, um, because it's, there's so many different uh, people there, including SAR, search and rescue, were there, mm -hmm. Marine, 
And we went in and had a had a chat with the the individuals who actually perform that life saving yeah. function. And they're all volunteers. They're all volunteers. Yeah. They're they do a tremendous job. Yeah. Uh, I know they're all across the country, but we were talking to the groups that were just on the island and the mainland mm -hmm. here. And you know they're out there in very inclement weather most of the time, uh, doing all those things that most of us wouldn't dream of doing as yeah. far as saving people and and you know making sure that we're safe when we're out there. So it was it was a great opportunity for us to to have a, a great chat with these people. Mm -hmm. They're very welcoming. Um, they're really eager to share their knowledge, and uh, so it was it was a, a good alternative rather than just looking at boats, but talking to some of the people. That actually help all of us when we're out there and we really appreciate all the work they do they they go work on shifts and sometimes you know taken away from their families not when they want to be um so and they know the waterways like the back of their hand they're very knowledgeable and always there to ask answer questions if you have any they are really, and, we appreciate all the work they yeah. do and they were there's mm -hmm. they're nice enough to even give us examples of some of the things that they did and why yeah. they did them um, which I thought was really interesting. It's a, no doubt it's an interesting job, challenging for sure, yeah. um, but vital to, to keeping us all and safe. And here in BC, we not only have the boat search and rescue, we also have helicopter search and rescue, so we see them all the time as well. We do. So we it's do. kind of really interesting to learn about what they're doing. What a great venue for showing boats, both at BC Place indoors and here on Granville Island. There were a great selection of smaller and larger vessels from many different suppliers and marinas, even some from the U.S. who all came together at the Vancouver Boat Show. It's really nice to mingle with other like-minded individuals, all with the shared interest of being out on the water. Granville Island is one of the most beloved public spaces in the city, attracting millions of visitors from around the world. Centrally located in an urban waterfront setting and full of history from industrial and maritime heritage, this charming spot is Vancouver's premier artistic and cultural hub. The Artisan District showcases many artists and designers. The public market was established in 1979 as a place where farmers and other food vendors could sell to consumers. It operates year-round indoors where visitors can purchase fresh produce, meat, fish and seafood, cheeses and other products, many locally sourced. We made our way back towards the ferry terminal, grabbing a bite to eat on the way, then boarded the Hollow passenger ferry to return back home to Vancouver Island. So thanks so much for watching today. Hope you uh, had fun seeing some of the images that we took at the Vancouver Boat Show. And we look forward to sharing more information about boats coming up in the future. Thanks for watching.